Hey everyone, this is Crystal, and today I am working in my 2020 Project Life album. I'm on week 33. This is August 10th through 16th, so back a few months. I have the November Life Crafted Kit from Citrus Twist Kits. I have all the little bits over here off to the side ready to play with. Uh, even though it's the November kit, I'm thinking I can find enough in it that will work for these much more summery uh, photos rather than fall. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can make it work. So that's what I'm going to do. I already have my photos ready to go. I just need to put this all together. So I, I am going to, I'm going to put you on fast forward and get this page done. So I'm going to start by going through the journaling cards that were in this kit and just going to lay some down where I think they might work. I'm going to play around quite a bit with the journal cards and uh, try them out in different places. I'm not really sure what direction I want to take this in as far as color or theme. I don't have a lot of journaling for this week, uh, but I do have a little bit, so I know that I will need at least one spot to tell a, a bit of a longer story. Uh, and then I'm just trying to find cards that will work with these square photos and um, trying to stick to a color scheme, although it's not going very well at this point. Uh, you'll see that that pink card was just standing out like a sore thumb, so I immediately got rid of it, and then I was trying to just kind of shuffle things around to figure out where else they could work on the spread, uh, but that wasn't really working either, and then I thought, well, maybe I need my title card, my 4x6 card to kind of tie everything together, but that really wasn't working either. So I go to the papers, which I love having six by eight papers that I can cut down and use behind my photos because I rarely need more than one or two full journal card for a spread. Uh, so just having that pattern paper to cut down that I can add just behind a photo to give it some color and some pattern is perfect for me. So that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, I pulled out a few that were kind of in the color scheme I had started with and I'm going to narrow that even further here in a second and stick with just kind of tones of peachy pink and teal which I love the combination of that peachy pink color and this gorgeous kind of minty teal. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I should have known that would be the, the way I would go with this spread from the beginning, but it took me a little bit of time to get there. Now that I'm there, I, um, I can just start kind of trimming things down and figuring out what needs to go where. So really the only thing left to do is to um, find that balance that uh, between the white space and the darker colors and the the areas of pink and the areas of teal and mint and just make sure that the entire page looks balanced to my eye. So um, even before I, I turned on the camera I had moved these photos around quite a bit so there was a lot of kind of indecision happening on this page today. Uh, luckily things go a bit more smoothly after, after that initial um, kind of hemming and hawing that I was doing. So um, very quickly I decide that I want to try to embellish monochromatically. So I'm going to do color on color. I'm going to find embellishments, die cuts, stickers, what have you in this kit that will work with the colors I have here. So I'm going to do mint on mint, teal on teal, pink on pink, and um, let me just tell you, I absolutely love how this turns out, and I'm absolutely going to try this method again. So it takes me a bit of time to search through all these. This is the first time I've gone through this die cut pack. Um, I'm just kind of discovering everything that's here. Um, I'm also, of course, looking at sentiments because that does matter. I'm not going to add something that's pink just because it's pink if it doesn't have anything to do with the story that I'm telling for that photo or for that day or whatever the case may be. So um, just taking my time finding things that I think will work that are in the right color. I'm going to go through this entire uh, ephemera pack and then I have two more to go through. So I also have the cut aparts, uh, the digital cut aparts that you get as a subscriber or you can also pick them up in the shop. Uh, they're like I said digital so you have to cut them at home. You just print and cut. Um, either with a machine like a Silhouette or a Cameo, no that is a Silhouette Cameo, a Cricut, that's the other one, um, either with that or just fussy cutting, which I think this month that's what I did, I think I just fussy cut them. Uh, but this is actually the digital tag, so that's another digital available in the shop, and I'm just looking through it. It was very much more fall themed than the rest of the die cuts were, so um, I am going to end up sticking mostly with this um, 
digital cut apart sheet and the ephemera kit that came or the ephemera pack that came in the kit. So just looking through each piece, finding colors and sentiments that work. And I'm doing my regular thing where I just kind of plop them down on the page and then I'll go back through and edit as I work through each individual pocket. So that's kind of the method that I've been using for a while and it works for me. Um, I like narrowing my options at least a little bit before I get started just so I don't have any regrets by the end. So I also grabbed this sheet of vellum word stickers, but I realized I really need to get my journaling on this page. So I went away and typed up all my journaling. I typed up some on a couple of the three by four cards. I also typed up some on that sheet of labels, which is something I've never done before. And I have no idea why, because it was so much easier to get my journaling on those labels before actually cutting them apart. So um, I need to remember to do that as well, because that made my life a lot easier for this spread. Uh, so now that I have all the journaling done, I can finally start actually gluing things down. So I'm going to start with this 3x4 card that is going to sit at the top of my page. I had a little banner that um, was just a little bit too long. It kind of covered up the words if I didn't cut off the top. So I just cut the top off and it did cut into the little kind of star shape that's on it, but that's okay. I'm gonna add a heart over the top of it and it's gonna look intentional. Um, these puffy hearts, like I said in my unboxing, I can never have enough of these puffy hearts from Citrus Twist. And I will use quite a few on this spread, but there are still so many more in this pack. So they go a long way. I absolutely love them. I I need I need a never-ending supply of them. Okay, so I grabbed just an old four by six card. It was a um, grid card with rounded corners. You used to be able to buy those in packs from Becky Higgins. Um, I have a ton of them still. So I just used that to connect the two three by four, um, the the photo and the card in that four by six pocket so that it doesn't move around. I'm going to do the same thing with this one here. So if you missed it here, I'm going to do it again. So I just grab that four by six card, add some adhesive to the back of my photo, and then I'll do the same with my journaling card. And I just glue them down to that four by six, and then it'll slip into that pocket easy peasy and um, will be, um, it, it'll make it so that it doesn't kind of slide around. So I had originally wanted this die cut there in between the two, but I had neglected to remember to leave space for it when I did my journaling. So I just cut it off. I just made it kind of only be on the photo and not on the journal card and that worked out just fine. Uh, just had to lift up that photo a little bit to get my scissors in there. And I'm sorry that things are cut off a little bit. I've recently moved my entire craft area in my house and I'm still trying to work out the kinks of my new filming setup. So I haven't quite got it the way I, I want it. So I apologize for that. You will see close-up photos of the entire spread at the end of this video though. Okay, so I'm moving on now to um, that three by four card that's right in between the two I've already worked on. I have that label that I've already added journaling to. I just trimmed it out. And you may have noticed I didn't get out my hole punch and punch those um, little rounded corners. I just cut them off at an angle. That's because um, I'm not sure where my hole punch is. Like I said, I just moved my entire craft area and some things have um, gotten a bit lost in in the shuffle so I'm sure it will turn up soon but until then I will just uh, turn those uh, rounded corners into angled corners and it'll be just fine. Okay so moving on just to the next card over again sticking with the same colors here so this is a minty colored card I'm sticking with minty colored embellishments I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on that other one so I have a little tag I have a label with my journaling I'm going to create the same kind of little cluster that I did on that first one and uh, just repeat that entire Thing. I even have the same kind of little embellishment and I love that kind of repetition. Normally I would have these further apart on my spread. Uh, it didn't work out that way. Um, in the end the best place for it was right next to each other uh, but yeah normally they would be further apart and then it would kind of make more sense to me but oh well. I still like the way it turns out. I'm still happy with how it looks. So I did have to trim off this photo a little bit. It was square, but the spot on this journaling card was not. It was more of a rectangular shape. So I just trimmed off a little bit off the top and bottom. Uh, nothing important was trimmed off. So 
I was able to um, keep the focus of the the photo intact. And then I'm just checking off the little things on this card that there are to check off that apply to this photo. And that's that's it. That's the story for that one. I'm not telling any more of a story. It was a pretty just basic everyday photo. Um, for this one, I I did kind of have a story to go with it but I couldn't really figure out how to get it on this page. Um, it wasn't an important story. It wasn't anything um, that I will ever need to remember or wish that I had written down at some point. I think, in fact, just seeing the photo will help me remember uh, what the story was. So I'm not going to worry about it. I don't get too super hung up on journaling in these these spreads. I don't have kids. There aren't kids to later on go through and read what I was thinking uh, it's mostly just for me. It's mostly just for me right now and for me in the future to look back through at the photos and the stories. Um, and that's not something that I will ever regret not adding. So that is my perspective on journaling in Project Life. I um, I know it's not for everyone, but that's where I'm at with with this whole project. Okay, so I want to add a bit of stamping. I'm not quite finished. I still have two cards to finish embellishing, but before I do that, I'm trying to figure out where I can do some stamping. And I had the idea to use one of these kind of circular milk cap style stamps on this pattern paper. And I thought I would do it tone on tone since my entire embellishing scheme for this entire spread has been tone on tone. I thought, why not stamp tone on tone? Now that I have a decent selection of uh, of ink colors in Distress Oxides and also in Pink Fresh Studio inks, I'm feeling much more confident in my ability to stamp in something other than black, which if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I generally, especially in Project Life, only stamp in black. But this is fun. This is a lot of fun getting to choose colors that match the uh, colors that I have on my spread. And it just adds that little bit of something extra here in that bottom corner of this card, it adds a little bit of interest. And that's really all I was after. So I um, was lucky that I had colors that matched for all of the ones that I use or for both of the ones that I used on this spread. Um, they matched really well and I really like the way that the stamping turns out. Right now I'm just fussing with this um, little ticket that has a coffee cup on it and I'm holding a, the picture is of me holding a uh, cold brew coffee that I tried this week. Um, and I was just trying to get it in the exact right spot. It wasn't quite working for me. I was having a bit of a, a struggle getting it to uh, align just the way that I wanted it to. So I decided to fill in that extra little space on that uh, ticket with another stamp. So I grabbed another one from the Legend stamp set. And this time I'm gonna stamp it in black. I had thought about doing pink again, but I thought this is gonna kind of serve as my journaling for this, this card. So um, I decided to go with black. It ends up being a little bit more bold than I would really like it to be, but I'm fine with it. It works out just fine in the end. Again, I'm not um, gonna stress about it too much. So then I just added another little heart just to fill in that kind of trapped blank space there. And then I'm just going to add the date. I was going to handwrite it, but I decided instead to grab my tiny date stamp and uh, add the date that way. So now that that one is all done, the only thing I have left to do is my title card. And normally my title card is something I work on first or very early on in the process but I was having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to do this one. So in fact, I decided to do more stamping while I thought about how to approach this title card. So I grabbed some uh, speckled egg distress oxide ink, which ma matched that uh, card perfectly. And I stamped just a little, um, it was like a little grouping of stars that was on the legend stamp set um, just to fill in some of that blank space there next to that puffy heart sticker. Okay, now finally on to my title card. So I have the white, or not they're not puffy, they're foam, white foam alphas from the kit and I thought they would stand out really nicely on this kind of darker um, 
teal paper. I went back to my little pile of ephemera there and grabbed a little label die cut that matches the two cards I've already used on this spread. So I thought uh, now is the time to use that if I'm going to use it. And then I thought it would give me a good spot to stamp my dates. So normally I use one of the regular labels from the kit, like the cut apart labels, but uh, for this one, I'm gonna use this die cut instead. So I'm just spelling out week 33 using my thickers alignment tool. I did have to go searching for that just for a second. Like I said, things are a bit chaotic in my craft space right now, but I did find it and I was able to use it to line up these, uh, these alpha stickers and I'm I'm feeling right now that I made a mistake because I'm not particularly liking this arrangement of things. It it looks a little bit like they're just kind of floating there with nothing to ground them. So I go back and I fix that by adding more things because how else are you going to fix it, right? You just keep adding stuff until it looks right. Uh, so that's the approach I take with this one. I'm just stamping the beginning and ending dates of this week. And then I'm going to just start adding more stuff. So I'm going to start with a few of these puffy heart stickers. I go to the uh, ephemera pack again to see if there's anything else there. I look through the other die cuts to see if there's anything in that uh, pile of embellishments that I can add. I think I end up with those uh, vellum word stickers again and I find one there that works really well and is the right color so I'm going to stick it right there below my week title and then embellish with these puppy hearts to kind of finish the whole thing off. Um, I do add some staples into lots of these hearts because I really love that look uh, and then I keep adding hearts because why not just add all the hearts when in doubt add more hearts. So the last thing that I do is I try, I try to add some of the enamel dots. They uh, were the right colors. I had the colors I needed to embellish um, the, the cards that I have on my page already, my monochromatic color scheme on each card. Um, so I was able to add a couple to these cards that I had created the little clusters on, but then I try to add them to the title card thinking I could make some little clusters of three around those hearts uh, but it doesn't end up working out I don't like it it looks like too much it looks like overkill which um, there's a fine line and I think we all draw it for ourselves like it's what's overkill for me is definitely not for some people and vice versa but for me this was definitely overkill so I peel them back up and it did lift off the uh, color of the paper just a little bit in one spot but again not going to worry about it. I'm going to let it go and, and just live with it. It'll be fine. So that is the spread all done. Here are the close-up photos. I hope you enjoyed watching this process. I hope you found some inspiration for using your kit. If you did, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here soon.